Welcome to Last Day's Signs and Wonders with Mel Bond. Well, we thank you so much for watching our program, and it, it pleases us so much, and uh, it's an honor and a privilege that uh, you'd watch. We thank everybody for all that you do in helping us reach out and touch the world with the miracle-working power of God's unconditional love. And um, those people that are watching, and if you've never watched our program before, and uh, we'd like to ask you, and those that are continually watching, that we'd like to ask you to pray and ask God what he'd have you to do in regards and being a partner with us, praying for us and, um, and helping us financially so we can continue to do what we're doing and uh, so that we could do more. And we want you to know that we're praying for all of our partners every day. So thank you so much from the depths of our heart. Now we want to take you right into this program, and I want to share with you the importance of reading God's Word. Now that might sound like a, a boring subject, but I promise you when I show you some things in the Word of God, it's going to encourage you to really get in God's Word and read it, and not just read it, but study the Word of God. Uh, just really study the Word of God. Um, first of all, if you would want to turn your Bibles to the book of John, chapter 14, and verse 6, that Jesus made this statement. He says that, uh, he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man or woman cometh unto the Father but by me. And uh, as you study the Word of God, and I won't share all of that this morning. I've done it so many times, but you can do a little research and you find out that Jesus and the Word of God are synonymous terms. That Jesus is the Word of God. He is the living Word of God. He, his, he is the Word of God. And so here, clearly, God is telling us that nobody can come to God. You can't get into His presence unless you do it through Jesus. You, you've got to do it in accordance to the Word of God. The Word of God is the way to the Father. Now this word cometh, that in the original language, this is what it says. It says to literally actually appear. And so you can literally, literally, actually appear in God's presence by the Word of God. Now, here's some things that we need to understand. God is a spirit. And the spirit world is more real than the physical world. And so you've got, you've got to understand that this is a spiritual experience. And so we can do it because God says so. And it's, it's a literal, actual experience. And we can do it Literally, when you begin to find out from the Word of God, we can do it on a regular basis, going to the presence of God. So, and it's all based on the Word of God. The Word of God, that is the way. If you've got Scripture to validate it, that is the way to the Father. Uh, in fact, as I study the Word of God, I find that reading the Word of God is the highest order of praying. Sometimes we've had the opinion and, and thinking that if we just go away someplace and pray for an hour or two hours or whatever, that that's very spiritual. And it is if it's in agreement with God's Word, but if it's not, that really it's in vain. It's, it's in vain. And, and so even Jesus said, He says there's people that they speak with their lips and with their mouth, but their heart is far from me. And so I find the highest order of praying is just reading the Word of God. And then, you know, I, I, I realize that, you know, I pray every day. I pray throughout the day that um, one of the things that I've learned, I, I read this years ago, probably 35 years ago, where Smith Wigglesworth was interviewed because there was such miracle-working power in his life. And they asked him, they said, man, you must really 
well, you pray five or six hours every day? And he says, so they ask him, how often do you pray? How long do you pray? And he says, well, he says, it's pretty rare that I pray more than a half an hour, but I never go more than a half an hour without praying. Wow. That's getting into God's presence. You know, and, and so turn your Bibles to the book of Jeremiah, chapter 33, and verse 3. That, and that's a, that's a good reason why that we need to memorize the Word of God because of the fact that if there's times that uh, you really need to get in God's presence, you need to get some answers from God, you need to get some influence of God's power, well, if you just memorize the Word of God, then immediately you can just get right into His presence. And uh, I want to show you from the Word of God that in the highest order of truth, when you, just, you can just close your eyes, and you don't have to close your eyes, when you get a hold of God's Word, that you actually just leave this world and go in, in, right into the presence of God. And according to the highest authority in existence, not physically, but a, a greater truth, spiritually. See, the spirit world is more real than the physical world. It was here long before the heaven and earth ever existed that, that the spirit world was here. It's the most real world. And so what we need to do is train our minds to realize that the spirit world is the most real world to where the spiritual experiences are more valuable, more precious, more real than physical experiences. Um, you know, as I study the Bible, I find that there are three major different types of visions. One of the visions is to have a physical manifestation. And, and that's happened to me one particular time in my life where that I saw Jesus and he was flesh and blood. He was just, it was in a, a physical manifestation and just as real as shaking hands with any of you. That's one experience. And there is another kind of a vision to where that you just see a spiritual image. And it's, it's spiritual. And you know when you see it that it's, it's, it's not physical. It's spiritual. And then there's another one where that you just, I'm going to use the word imagination because that's what it is, that you mentally have a vision. And as we study the Word of God, that I see that type of a vision is the highest order of visions. We have a tendency to think the highest order of a vision would be for Jesus to appear to you and he's in the flesh. You know, just flesh and blood. But it's not. See, that's a physical. That's a carnal vision. And, but the highest order of vision is one that you just initiate. And guess what? The Bible says that Jesus will never leave you nor forsake you. And so we need to visualize the word of God as being truth. That Jesus is with us. And see, uh, I won't get into all those different types of visions. You just study it out. But those are the different types of visions. But the highest order is one that you just, you mentally just see God's word truth. You just mentally see yourself in heaven talking to Jesus. That's the highest order of visions. Now let's look here in Jeremiah. And the only way that you can do that, Jesus are the word of God. It's the truth. It's the life. That's the way. That's the way into the presence of God by the Word of God. Thank God for that because 24 hours a day, if you wake up in the middle of the night and you've got a problem, well, you can just get right into the presence of God. Just go to the throne of God. Let's look here in Jeremiah chapter 33 and verse 3. Here God says this. These are words that God is speaking. And He says, Call on Me and I'll answer thee. And show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Now that word call, the fuller meaning of that word call in the original writings of the Bible, it's rendered 40 other times just in the New Testament as read the Word of God. Read the Word of God. 
And so 40 times is a strong doctrine. And so what God is saying, read the Word of God. Why would we read the Word of God? Because it's the highest order of praying. You really want to get close to God? Sit down and start doing this. Just, just, just even for a half an hour, read the epistles and watch the difference in your life. The epistles are the highest order of God's will and purpose and plan for us in this dispensation, in this period of time. The epistles. So it'll, I, I want to encourage you to spend most of your Bible reading in the epistles. And so he's saying, call to me. Read. Read the Word of God. And I'll answer thee. And here's one of the things that the Spirit of God told me one particular time because of the fact that I remember reading this and I said, God, I've called. I've called. And I didn't hear you answer. How many has ever done that? Tell the truth. And here's what, here's what God told me. He says, you read until, until I answer. Read until. There's been times in my life that I've had the death sentence given to me by medical science, by doctors, and there wasn't any hope, nothing that they could do. And one of the things that I would do, I would steal away and read. I'd say, okay, I, you know, I'm going to read the Word of God. And I'd read the Word of God, the epistles, eight hours a day. And after about three days, no symptoms, nothing, everything gone, everything okay. What medical science can't do, and thank God for medical science, but when medical science gives up, that's when it's time to get a hold of the Word of God. And so you read until. Read until He answers. And when He answers, here's one of the things that I've always found out. That if when I get serious with God, and I've got a need, and it's just like, Dear God, I've got to hear you. That not only does God answer your, your request, but He gives you something that's ten times better than that. That I can remember years ago, and I've got a book talking about it, that Christians' uh, number one problem, I wrote about that, and basically it was we were, gonna, we were building this building. And man, we were in huge, huge trouble. Don and I especially, because it was our name that was on the line. And, it was, and we entered into a raining season, and it was just pouring down rain. And I'd borrowed a lot of money to build this building, and we couldn't make the payments on the storefront, much less all this money that, to build this building. And so that caused you to pray. And so I spent a lot of time, man, just reading the Word of God. And then one night that... Uh, uh, during the night session, I, I went to heaven and I seen an angel and he told me, he says, it, and now the news media said this, they said, it will stop raining and it will not rain again, I forget for how many months, but it'd be enough time for us to finish the building program. However, the weather report had been saying for about two weeks, they said, we have entered into a rainy season like Missouri has never ever had and it's not going to stop raining for like two or three more months. And it, and it was just raining and raining and raining, raining and raining. And I, I'll never forget it. And then when I seen this angel, not only did he tell me, this is what he said. He says, well, God's heard your prayers. And he says, it'll stop raining tomorrow and it'll never rain again until your building's built. And then I, you know, I, I go in great details about this because it was so such a dramatic experience. But he says, since you're here, that's not the major thing God wants you to know. And I, but I was, you know, he says, since you're here, and in essence, since we've got your attention, since God's got your attention, he says, what I have assigned, what God has assigned you is he wants you to let the whole world know. That's what he said. He says, the whole world needs to know that to get God to do something or to understand God and to know God is not based on legalistic terms. It's not based on legalistic terms. And he says that's what you need to let the world know. Basically, letting the whole world know that God 
loves the whole world with unconditional love. And so he gives you, and so I was interested in just little old Winsfield, Missouri, this little old building, but God was interested in the whole world. So he answered, and then he gave me something that was even greater. And since then, he's given us the platform to tell the whole world. Well, let's go on here. So not only does God... Well, I've got some good news for you that the Holy Spirit has been dealing with me so strongly to come back to West Palm Beach, Florida. God has some very special things that he's wanting to do in West Palm Beach, Florida. And so we're going to be back there July the 14th at 6 p.m. at the Palm Beach Gardens Community High School in their theater. And the address is 4245 Holly Drive, Palm Beach. And uh, you can get more information by uh, calling our office, which is 636-327-5632. That information is on the screen, or you can go to melbond.com. Uh, if you'd like to be on our prayer team, then uh, contact our office as soon as possible so that uh, we can get you on the prayer team, get you uh, through our course so that you can... Uh, Pray with me for people that um, needs miracles, needs healings. And if you've already been on one of our prayer teams, that still yet you need to call our office. And so we'd love to see you there. And the cutoff date for that is June, um, June the 11th. And so we need to get that information right away. And so I want to encourage you. Uh, to bring the blinded eyes, bring people that need some miracle, bring people that are deaf, people that are crippled, people missing bodily parts, bring the dead. I promise you that uh, miracles are going to take place, that God's going to be glorified. We're going to make an absolute uh, fool of the devil. So looking forward to seeing you uh, July the 14th, 6 p.m., Palm Beach, Florida. I see a spirit that uh, has been attacking you and uh, predominantly he attacks you in your mind. But the devil has been coming against you and causing great problems, but it's predominantly in the mind. But right now where the, I see the spirit is, is located and he's sort of like a snake up and down your spinal column from the middle of your back and it goes down into the right uh, leg region, and he affects other things. I, I would say that there's like bad circulation in your right leg or something going on in that right foot, as well as uh, maybe some other issues. Have, have you been to the doctor, Ed? I have a, uh, a torn uh, ligament in the back of my back, and I keep re-injuring it. Okay. Happened last fall. Okay. Yeah. Does it hurt now? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. It, it comes and goes. Oh, it comes and goes. Yeah. Well, let's just make it go, go, go. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, everybody stretch forth your hand towards Ed. In Jesus' name, we take authority over that demonic force. You can't come against him on two counts. Number one, that Ed's body is private property. He's the property of the Holy Ghost. And so we have a sign up, no trespassing, devil, no trespassing, sickness, disease, or problems, so leave. And then even greater than that is the fact that we have a name above every name. It's the name of Jesus. And so in Jesus' name, I command that demonic force to leave. Amen. Amen. Well, Ed, you said it just kind of comes and goes, so... I don't, just stand up a second and just, did, did you have any problems in that right leg or the right foot region? I keep uh, injuring the back, the ligament in the back. Okay, well move, move around, Ed. Just kind of, kind of go back and forth. How much better does that feel, Ed? A lot better. Amen. Amen. In Jesus' name, here's what I see. I see a spirit, and he just sets on, like, your shoulders and uh, probably cause some aggravations in your neck and your shoulder region. 
And let me just see if you have problems in your neck and your shoulders. How long has that been going on, Gloria? Since, uh, I think, like uh, 2000. And I ended up having surgery in 2001. Where'd you have the su surgery at? Uh, my neck. In your neck? He cut a piece of bone from my hip and placed it neck. in my neck. And oh, OK. So I'm still constantly having problems with it. But I have a lot of dizziness okay. lately. And okay. the shoulders, they hurt a lot. So do you have aggravation there now? Yes. Well, let's just get rid of it all. Yes. In Jesus' name, we take authority over that demon spirit in her uh, neck region, shoulder area, head region. Leave in Jesus' name. We command you. Now, Glory, here's what I want you to do. Stand up and do something that was difficult for you to do or something that you couldn't do before. Amen. Move your head around, Gloria. How's that feel? Isn't God a good God? All the time. All the time. All the time. Amen. This lady right here, is it all right if I pray for you? Boy, this spirit, is he's bothering at several things in your body. Stretch forth your hands towards Anita. Now, now, here's what I want you to do, Nita. Just put your hands on your lap. I want you to get in a real uh, receiving mode. In Jesus' name, we take authority over that demon spirit. He's tormented in the brain region, even caused pain, aggravation in the neck, in the shoulders, and down that heart area, and the, the, the bladder area. I command that demon spirit, you leave in Jesus' name. Nita, I want you to get up and just, just take off running around this building. Actions activate God's power. Run the way you did when you were 16. Yeah. There you go, Nita. Actions activates God's power. Now, yeah, how much better is it now? It's gone. Amen. Ain't God a good God? <laughs> Amen. Let, let me ask if there's anybody here tonight that... Uh, uh, you're deaf in one ear, if you're deaf in both ears, and somebody's going to have to talk to you next to you, I guess. So if there's anybody that's deaf, all deaf people come up here. In Jesus' name, I take authority over demon spirits of deafness. Leave these people in Jesus' name. You can't stay. We've got authority over you. Leave their ears. And now in Jesus' name, I command their ears to surrender, relax to God's miracle power, in the matchless name of Jesus, that name that's above every name, in Jesus' name. Here's what I want you to do. I'll get this up, young lady here. Will you come here? And I want you to stand here. And you, you, you put your hand over this here and you repeat what she says. And say something different. God is my salvation. I think she said God is my salvation. Absolutely. Amen. How much better do you hear? It's good. Amen. Better. Amen. Amen. And just keep on focusing on that. That's, amen. I can hear what you said you could. Oh, you can hear. <laughs> and, you and you don't have your hand. And you can oh, hear what I could. Amen. Amen. Okay, anybody blind in one eye or two eyes? Nope. You're blind. Total blindness. <laughs> George is blind? But <laughs> well, you're blind, you got me fooled. <laughs> you got just one, one eye Yeah, this eye is completely shut down. I see everything with this one contact lens. Okay. Legally blind in both eyes. Legally blind in both eyes. But this eye is. It's, it just shows light. Just, just, just shows light. So that's one we're going to work on first. We'll work on the easy one first, okay? Okay. Okay. So legally blind in both eyes, but in this eye only sees light. No, the left eye. So close your eyes, George. Everybody stretch forth your hands, George. Let's focus on that left eye first. In Jesus' name, this is a piece of cake. Leave. Leave in Jesus' name. You demon spirit, you have to leave. Amen. Okay, George, put your right hand over your right eye and no peeking. Okay. <laughs> and uh, the guy in the green shirt that you played for, 
I want you to get out in the aisle there, and I want you to tell me what he's doing with his hand. What's he doing now? Is he waving at me? You said you didn't see him in the fight. How much better do you see him, George? Way better. <laughs> Amen. 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 And we'll keep getting better. Okay. Let, let's pray for the other eye, the, 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 the right eye. In Jesus' name, close your eyes. In Jesus' name, I command that right eye, the demonic force, leave in Jesus' name. And I command that right eye to surrender to the power of God. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now just look around for things you couldn't see before, George. What time is it? It is just about 25 to 9. 25 to 9. You're doing pretty good. Amen. 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 Yes, we have a special offer for you that will absolutely change your life according to the highest authority in existence. This is offer number 46 for a total of $35. The title of this offer is Imaginations, A Doorway into the Supernatural. That as I study the Word of God that I find that... Um, it's so sound scripturally that there are something like 264 words in the New Testament that uses the word believe that has the meaning of imagination. Verses like Mark 9, 23, all things are possible to them that believe. In Hebrews in chapter 11, verse 1, faith is imagination. And I'll show you that because it says that faith is the evidence of things not seen. Webster's Dictionary says, imagination, the meaning for imagination, is to form a mental image of something not present, to conceive. Einstein says, imagination is the preview of life's coming attractions. The devil has fought Christians from using their imagination, and I'm convinced it's a law, an ordination of God that will absolutely revolutionize the body of Christ. You don't want to miss this offer. Number 46, uh, Imagination, a Doorway into the Supernatural, a total of $35. Thank you for watching Last Day Signs and Wonders with Mel Bond. For more teaching and information, check out our website at melbond.tv or write us at Agape Church, P.O. Box 306, Wentzville, Missouri, 63385 or call our office at 636-327-5632. Keep up to date by friending us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. Last Day Signs and Wonders is made possible by the generous gifts of our partners. Please consider becoming a partner and help Mel Bond take this message of Last Day Signs and Wonders around the world.